For those of you who are using Semantic Scholar in your research, today I want to talk about setting up research feeds. In a prior video, I talked about setting up a personal library within Semantic Scholar, setting up different folders, and discussing, generally speaking, how to set up a flow where you find articles, moving, moving those into first a folder called Pending, and then as you become more familiar with the articles and you're deciding on whether or not those articles uh, serve a purpose, maybe moving those into another folder called, in this example, native speakerism. For the purposes of this video, I'm using the topic of nat native speakerism as the example. But today I want to talk about how to go about setting up research feeds, which is fairly automatic in Semantic Scholar, but I think it's worth mentioning uh, so that you can set up your folders and uh, set up your feeds appropriately. So in the example that we talked about in a prior video, I set up a folder called Pending and a second folder called Native Speakerism. So if you go into your personal library after you've signed in to Semantic Scholar and you edit the Pending folder, by default, you'll see here the research feed settings are set to uh, find find different articles based on the, uh, the folder name, in this case, pending. Now, in this particular case, because I'm using the folder pending as kind of a temporary space for putting articles and then later moving those out, whether I'm deleting them altogether or removing them from my library or whether I'm moving it into another folder, probably you don't want to have or will need to have a research feed setting for this folder. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off and click Save. And you'll notice here now this, this bullet point now has changed from, from, uh, from highlighted to basically grayed out. So it's not being included now <clears throat> in the, the feed. If you notice that the folder native speakerism is or has been selected, and again, this is by default. So whenever you set up a new folder, this will be the default setting. So you really don't need to do anything if, unless for some reason later on you don't need or want to include the feed uh, in, in your, in your uh, you don't want to include that search in your feed. And this might be the case, let's say if you have two or three folders, maybe you want to talk about a general topic of native speakerism, but you want to set up more specific folders that relate to an overall theme. I could see a use case where, let's say that you have found enough articles for that particular subtopic that you've given this folder name to, and you feel that you have what you need. You don't want to include additional uh, searches in your feed for that particular subtopic. So you might have some folders that you have what you need and you want to exclude from your search so that your feed only includes, let's say, topics that you're still looking for. Okay, but this is going to be a personal choice and you have this option by, again, simply going into edit using this or clicking this icon here to the right of the folder. And again, just selecting or deselecting uh, the, the research feed. Okay, you can also, if you need to later on, delete the folder. You also have that option. All right, so once you have the appropriate name, and this is also going to be very important, the way that you name the folders are also going to be uh, obviously indicative of what kind of search results you're going to get. So you do want to make sure that you're being very um, intentional in how you are naming the uh, folders in your uh, personal library in Semantic Scholar. But now we can go to research feeds and based on those settings that we've just looked at, you're gonna get hopefully some results. And here are some results based on the topic of native speakerism. And here you can see we can easily go in and begin looking and adding to the library. Again, these are results that are not currently in my library. So as I'm making decisions, I can say, well, I'm going to 
select this and either add it to my pending. Again, if I'm just looking at the abstract and, and making a judgment call just based on the abstract, I could, I could put it into the pending and then later go into the results, maybe go into the, uh, the implications of the study and, and then make a further decision about whether or not I want to include that in my own writing or my own research. All right, so basically that's, that's it. Uh, they have an option here for research feeds, and uh, this is going to be something that is going to be very useful. If you go into your own personal settings and you select alert preferences, you can also decide how you want to be notified of these results. Okay, so this might also be another space or another uh, configuration that you go into to personalize the types of notifications that you're receiving to, to find articles. This is all uh, a way, or these are all strategies in trying to find the information you need for your related topic. And it's always good practice when you're working with an instructor and you find, a, uh, let's say, a topic that you are having some problems finding articles. It's always a good idea before you make decisions about changing the topic, especially if they're drastic changes to your topic, uh, to work with your instructor to make sure that you've exhausted all of the, the different search strategies that are available and also the different databases that you have, Semantic Scholar being one of them, but of course there are many others. So always make sure that you're checking with your instructor before you make uh, major decisions about changing topics, especially if you have already been spending time on a particular topic and uh, maybe time is. Uh, running out and you're, you're making maybe last minute decisions to, to change topics, always make sure that you check first with your instructor because maybe uh, he or she can give you some direction in, uh, in the way that you're searching or perhaps instead of a drastic change, maybe uh, a slight modification to your thesis might be in order. So I hope this helps. This has been just a very quick video looking at how to set up research feeds within Semantic Scholar, and uh, good luck in your academic search.